All right. Good morning to everybody in the room and good time of day for all of our listeners, wherever it is that you're at. And thank you for joining us for another episode of Stories Equals Success, where we meet with entrepreneurs and business professionals and see how their stories have played a role in generating the success that they enjoy. Today, sitting across from me, I have a very prominent individual in the space that he's in and someone that's become a really good friend to myself and Tyler, my business partner. Uh, he is the founder and owner of Royal Realty here in Florida. Uh, and he's also an entrepreneur that has his fingers in a lot of different cookie jars that I'll let him talk about a little bit later. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Ian Reinhardt, my man. Thank you for joining you. us. How you doing? Doing great, man. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Thank you so much for asking. Um, so one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to sit down with you in particular and that you came to mind when we started slating this podcast is, you know, you and I have sat down and had some conversations about, you know, our business and you have shared some of your experiences with me. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for you as far as not only the way that you've committed yourself to learning the ins and outs of existing in your space, um, but also your willingness to, you know, share valuable information and experience that you have developed. Um, and so I think probably a good question that I would have for you to start out is like, you know, where, where would you say that you get that from? Like a lot of people will play their cards kind of close to their chest mm -hmm. when they learn something new or something impactful. Um, you know, where, what, what's made you different in that regard? What's made you so willing to share? Yeah, I guess I would say, uh, you know, it's just the way I was raised. Um, I've always been super uh, creative as far as in, you know, with business and, and selling things. When I was younger, uh, in middle school, we did, me and my friends, we were skateboarders. Okay. And, you know, we went to this, this thing called the Dew Tour. And there's just this big uh, skateboarding, it was like X Games almost, but it was here in Orlando. And, uh, you know, we would get these really cool orange shoelaces. And I would take them to school, and all the cool kids were wearing these orange shoelaces, right? Because they all went to the Dew Tour. And if you went to the Dew Tour, you were a cool skateboarder. Mm. And everybody wanted them. And they're like, you know, how do we get these, these, these shoelaces? And so I just I immediately saw opportunity, and I started selling them. And when me and my friends would go to the Dew Tour, you know, we would all work together as a unit to get as many shoelaces as we could because mm. we knew we could go back to school and sell them, you know, for, for $5 a pack or whatever, and people wow. would buy them. Um, so I guess it kind of just started. That was like my really my first... Uh, I guess entrepreneur, you know, kind of crack at it, you yeah. know, selling, selling random things. And, you know, I just realized that we work so much better together, you know, and, and, you know, if I would have did it myself, I wouldn't have got as many shoelaces, you know, it wouldn't have been as fun, you know, it was fun friend thing, you know, we did it together and it was just so much more effective that way too. So that kind of started there as I, I saw the opportunity, you know, I saw the, 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 um, yeah, the opportunity, I guess, you know, when you're with a group of people to up those numbers even more, mm -hmm. you know, rather than when you're by yourself. But I love that because uh, it feeds into two of my tenets in when it comes to business, one of which is that I don't see anyone as competition. So even individuals that do videography or even other agencies, I see them all as potential collaborators if they're open to, um, which seems like the way that you saw your friends and the mm -hmm. folks that you were, you know, that you were around. Um, but the other thing is that, you know, there is opportunity everywhere. You just have to be willing to look and uh, do whatever it is that it takes to make it happen. And it seems right. like you got your first foray with that knowledge and that awareness pretty young. Um, so I know that you have some extensive entrepreneurship experience beyond what I described. So tell me a little bit about like, you know, what are you cooking up? What have you mm. cooked up in the past? Like what, what does your um, experience encompass? So I still got a long way to go. Um, yeah, I started, like I said, I started that in middle school. I kind of started to get a taste of it. We started with the shoelaces. We were selling gum. You know, we'd go to the store, we'd buy like little 75 cent packs of gum and we turn around and sell them. I just saw it was like, it was fun, yeah. right? It's fun to take something and, and sell it and to make some money off of it. Um, my first business uh, right out of high school, I only had one job, I was a lifeguard. Okay. Um, and then after that, I did some landscaping, and then I realized this is not what I, I don't want to work for other people. Yeah. Um, not just because it wasn't cool, or not just because, you know, it wasn't enough money, just because it wasn't fun. Mm. It wasn't fun to work for other people. So I started a pressure washing business with actually with a good friend of mine, uh, AJ, AJ Jackson. Okay. And we, uh, we went out there, and we were, we were pressure washing driveways, and we were pressure washing 
uh, you know, houses and stuff like that. And I saw some opportunity to get some people on sort of like a monthly subscription type deal, right? Like residual income. Mm -hmm. So we started washing, uh, we started pressure washing people's trash cans, uh, which mm. is disgusting. But, <laughs> but we had all my neighbors like within a week signed up, you know, 15 bucks a month. We'd go by once a month and we'd pressure wash our trash cans. Wow. Um, so that was actually going really good and I, I enjoyed pressure washing. Uh, but I was going to Valencia at the time, I was going to college and uh, I needed to pay for classes, so I sold my pressure washer. Um, and then from there, I, I, I really stopped doing pressure washing altogether. And then we started, that's when we started doing real estate. I, I had uh, my rich dad, I call him, uh, it's my, my dad's best friend. He actually passed away this year. Mm. Uh, but he inspired me to get into real estate. Uh, for, my, for my graduation, he had bought me my real estate course. And, you know, I, I, I knew I liked real estate. I liked big houses. I liked mansions. I thought they were cool. Who doesn't, right? Yeah. Um, so he bought me the real estate course. I didn't really know what I was getting into. It took me about a year before I passed it, um, you know, because the time was about to run out. You only have a year to take the course. Since you receive it. Since I received it. Okay, so, gotcha. So I got it as soon as I graduated, which was like right before, you know, I turned 19. Okay. And I ended up uh, passing it right before it expired, right before I turned 20. I got my real estate license. Um, it took me about six months to sell my first house. But from then, all that work that I did those first six months, you know, I was training and trying to get mentorship. Um, all that work had kind of snowballed into the rest of that year. And, you know, the rest of that year, I, I actually sold, I think, 14 houses. Wow. Um, and from there, I was able to convince my dad to join, uh, to start real estate with me. Wow. So, um, you know, it brings me back to that team thing. It's just everything's better to do with a team, you know. It's like he brought in a different element and I want to get into that too. You know, the way we think is different. Mm -hmm. um, so it's good to bring in different minds to your business as well. Um, so that's just one of, that's a couple of things that I started back, back then, um, you know, before I actually got into what I love to do, which is real estate. Uh, I love real estate because it's just the, the possibilities are endless mm -hmm. and you know, you meet people and you can actually genuinely help people, uh, you know, get into better situations, you know, just, a couple months ago, this lady that I met at an open house, her name was Munda, and Munda is from Africa, mm. and her husband is still stuck in Africa, and Munda needed to buy a house in order to get her husband to come over. Um, so we literally were looking at houses for almost a year. You know, I'd gotten her under uh, certain contracts, and she had, you know, messed up some things on accident, and, you know, we were, she wasn't a specifically strong buyer, you mm. know, she was an FHA buyer, which is sort of... You know, everybody wants cash or conventional nowadays. Right. Um, so it's hard to find her a deal where the seller would accept her offer. Um, I must have showed her, you know, close to 100 houses. Wow. And, you know, eventually we, we saw one that she loved, right? She absolutely loved it. And <clears throat> she, she made an offer on it, but she got beat out by a cash buyer. So we ended up, you know, walking away from it because we couldn't, we couldn't compete with the cash buyer. And I got her in another, into another house that she didn't like as much, but, you know, it would do for her. Um, we ended up getting a call back uh, about a week or two later from the listing agent on the house that she fell in love with. She said, hey, cash buyer canceled. You know, you guys, we loved your story. I wrote this big, long story about her and her family and all her kids are, are grade A students. They're all on honor roll. Like she's an amazing mother. And, you know, they just, they love that and they wanted to work with us. And so um, they called us back after that one had canceled and you know, I got her in that house and now she refers me to all her friends and family and, you know, and her husband came back and, you know, so it's just a really good touching story. Like that's why I do it. You know, of course I love the money. I love to inspire people, but at the end of the day, it feels great when you actually genuinely help someone, you know, accomplish a goal and get their, you know, what they want out of life. Yeah. You know, cause it's a huge step. I'm tearing up. No count. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Able to see it. <laughs> um, but I, I think that's so powerful because it, it plays into the whole reason that we wanted to do this which was, you know, as videographers, as a video agency, so much of what we do is about storytelling. And um, I think a lot of people are scared to tell their story and the stories that they see as part of their profession on a day to day. And, um, you know, we wanted to show that that is such a big part of what makes you successful. Like you just said, because of that story that you became a part of and became so entrenched in, you know, now you have folks that are coming to you uh, that didn't know who you were, but they're coming into their relationship with you already knowing 
where your intentions are, already mm -hmm. knowing that you're someone that's here to help. Mm -hmm. And that's because someone was able to share a story that you were a part of. Yeah. And uh, man, that's that's absolutely powerful. Thank you, yeah. So yeah. tell me a little bit about, you know, when you first went into real estate, um, obviously there was a learning curve there and mm -hmm. uh, there were some, some things that you needed to undergo as transformative elements to bring you into the individual that you are now. Um, can you describe a little bit about like what what does that process look like? So you've decided, okay, I love real estate. Um, you know, I want to dive deep into this. You are in the position now where you own a brokerage. Mm -hmm. So, and it's kind of broad, but can can you kind of walk me through like what does that transformation look like from okay. the beginning to being where you are now? Yeah, yeah. So uh, a lot of people don't know this about me. I mean, my close friends know this about me, but I'm actually an introvert. You know, really socially awkward. You know, I, I force interactions. Um, but, you know, I get really nervous when I talk to people sometimes. So a lot of it came just from just from putting myself in uncomfortable positions. Mm. Right. So, uh, you know, when I first started, um, you know, I really hated talking to people because I didn't know what I was talking about. Mm. So the way for me to overcome that was becoming a market expert. So first, first and foremost, a lot of people, when they see real estate, they don't really know what it takes. They think we just sell houses and make a lot of money, right? Um, which is, could be the case. You know, we do, that is what we do. Um, <laughs> but they don't see everything else that it takes too. So first and foremost, before you're anything in real estate, you are a real estate expert, mm. right? That is the first thing you gotta be. So you gotta know the market like the back of your hand. You gotta know what houses are selling for, um, you know, how many are the, you know, average days on market, average uh, listing price, you know, just the statistics, you start there, right? Now that gives me something to talk about when I meet with people and I can actually tell them something they might not have already known. Mm. Um, so that's what gave me the confidence to actually go out there as an introvert and talk to these people who I'm meeting for the first time or you know who I would never talk to in, in regular situations because I was a 19 year old kid, right. 20 year old kid. And you know, why would somebody who's 50 years old, who's selling their $400,000, you know, investment you know the biggest thing they, they do in their life is buy and sell real estate some people um, you know why would they trust me to sell it well because first and foremost I'm a market expert so that's where I started um, and that transformation really just took me dedicating myself to learning first learning everything I needed to learn about real estate and then uh, and then delving into uncomfortable situations with people where I could figure out ways to just get them to talk more than I had to talk. Mm. Um, so, and figure out what they want and what were their motivations. Because once you figure out someone's motivations and what they want, you know right away if you can help them. Um, so that's really what helped me overcome, you know, being that introvert in this, this market where you really need to be uh, kind of a social butterfly yeah. in order to thrive. Um, but, you know, that is, that was necessary for me. So yeah. some people come in, you know, right away like, we have, I have a couple of agents in my office. They're just, they're super social. And you notice like they get business easily, you know, just because they're always talking to people, you know, people love them. Uh, for example, Anthony, you know, he's one of my, my, my protégés. He's also my, one of my best friends. Um, you know, the guy, he just can walk into any situation and people love him. You know, it's just something about the way that he expresses himself freely without care. And, you know, and I have another agent who's like that too. Her name's Brianna. Right, so they just love to talk to people, and they love people, and their business thrives because of that. So I never had that. So I always had to work really, 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 really hard in order to kind of, kind of get halfway there. Yeah. Um, you know, and and that's just a couple of my my agents who have been super successful lately. Um, you know, I also got a couple other agents, Jeremiah. Uh, you know, he works really, really hard, and you know, he's he's a young kid, so he's still learning. Um, we got Nate who has a couple different jobs, but you know, he's like a superstar football player. People love him too. He gets a lot of business. Um, I got a couple new agents, uh, Edgar and Cleo who, you know, they're both bilingual and that really mm -hmm. helps in this market too. So if you speak two languages, you know, you're automatically smarter than most people, Yeah. you know, because, and not only that, not only are you smarter, you can also relate to more people. Right. I can't tell you how many times I've had, you know, Spanish only Spanish speaking people come to me and I couldn't help them right. and how frustrating it was. You know, yeah. I had to use my phone or whatever to, to talk to them and I'd say some, something stupid that had nothing to do with what <laughs> we were talking about. They're like this gringo. Accidental translation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but so that helps too. Um, yeah, but that was my sort of yeah. kind of 
transformation there. I had to, that's how I did it. There's one thing that you mentioned there that I think is um, is really profound because I think a lot of people that are considering video or even just like increasing their digital presence, they're looking for a way to grow their business. You know, at the end of the day, business is all about relationships, especially in your industry. Right. And uh, I think a lot of people look at some of the avenues that they can use to build those relationships and they feel like, ah, I'm an introvert. I can't, like, I just am not built that way. Mm. And uh, you mentioned that it took you a lot of work and a lot of uh, intentionality behind, you know, kind of transforming yourself into a person that at the very least could position yourself in a way where that wasn't holding you back. Maybe you didn't like build yourself into an extrovert mm -hmm. or extroverted person, so to speak, but you, you were able to mitigate that as something that kept you from doing what you wanted to do. Right. And uh, I think that's an affirmation for a lot of people that that is mm -hmm. possible. Absolutely. So yeah. I appreciate that for you. Yeah, yeah. It's all it's all in your mind. You yeah. Know? Even even coming here, I was nervous to do this podcast, but like, you know, I'm sitting here sweating a little bit, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's you do it and then you're better for it. I walk out of here and be exhilarated. Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, I did that. Well, we're exhilarated that you're here, my man. So thank I'm you so much I'm glad it's you guys, us. too. Like, you know, I, I know you guys. So. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, you know, we keep it cool. Yeah, we always for sure. keep it cool. For sure, yeah. And I love I love Ty. You know, he started with me back when, you know, I was still uh, just a sales associate. He was helping me do videos. Um, I remember the first video we did was uh, the quarantine video where we mm. were wearing that, that – the hazmat suits and you know we were, I remember that. we were sitting in the chairs and you know you're gonna have to clip that in there somewhere, <laughs> we were sitting in the chairs i was like trying not to move because every time i'd move the, the thing would wrinkle and it's, <laughs> and it's really cool to watch how far you guys have come you know your transformation i'd like to hear some some stories about what you guys have done to get you know from from where you were to where you are now even though it's been a short period of time yeah. and we're both you know i you know i know we're both not where we want to be because we think alike and we, yeah. we have these big dreams but, you know, I'd like to hear, you know, what kind of stuff you've done to to kind of get where you guys are now, you know, the popularity. Oof, man, that's that's a doozy. Um, I would say probably the biggest thing for us. And so just to give some context to the folks listening, like I am a problem solver and that is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing in that if I have a problem, I love solving it like I live for that. The curse side of that is that sometimes I make problems to solve. <laughs> um, so I'll make a problem out of nothing right. <laughs> before it has arisen as a problem. I think one of the things that really has started us and that we're still seeing the impacts of this, but one of the things that's really impacted us transforming into what we are now and continuing that is really just getting on the same page um, between myself and my business partner and finding a plan, like just being able to implement a plan and say, okay, this might not be the best solution to what it is that we're trying to do, but if it's not, it's going to tell us something. And then when we spin up a new plan, it's gonna be based off of information and not based off of a whim or off of a lack of patience. Uh, that in and of itself, number one, is really refreshing because for me, sometimes I get so frantic and I'm like, mm -hmm. this isn't moving the way it needs to. Like, I need to do something else. I really right. suffer from shiny object syndrome sometimes okay. when yeah, it yeah. comes to like business plans. And I know all a that. lot of people who are like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah it's and it's, hard. I mean, it's hard, especially now because there's so much information out about how you should be doing things um, or the, the new thing that's going to elevate your business. Right. And uh, I am the people that push that and peddle that. I am like their golden ideal audience. Most of it's smoke and mirrors though. Yeah, and yeah. some people, they, they eat that up. Oh know, yeah. I, I know a lot of people who are just, it's not gullible, they just haven't had the life experience yet. Right, right. oh yeah. And I mean that, you know, life is the best teacher, uh, mm -hmm. your own life experience. But outside of that, I mean, I think the other biggest factor has been being willing to ask for help. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very prideful. I, I don't like showing people that I don't know something or that I uh, made a mistake. And bringing myself to even like you'll remember a few months ago, you know, I uh, you had something that you needed to get done. And I told you, you know what, I'll, I got this. We'll take care of this in exchange for your time. I want to sit down with you and go over some of the right. things that mm -hmm. uh, I'm considering implementing. And that was really hard to do um, because it meant showing you that I still have things I want to learn. And that's been really hard. But at the end of that conversation, like you said, I felt so good and just exhilarated because it showed me that there are people in my stead and in my space that just really want to help and are open to helping and that 
you know, don't look down on anybody that is in that position where they are recognizing, hey, I could use some insight. I could use a helping hand. Um, I think that's really hard for especially like young entrepreneurs and young business owners to eat is that like just because you have all this information out there doesn't mean that you have to figure it all out by yourself or even that that's possible. Mm -hmm. Um, You got to be able and willing to accept that finding a helping hand is rare and you really do not want to turn that away because of your pride. Um, So that's been a lesson for me. I I feel like, you know, people want to help. Yeah. You know, so it's that pride thing that you're saying that was keeping people from helping you. So yeah. Like when you re- when you finally asked for help, it was there for you. Like, if, yeah. you know, most people, it's their natural inclination to help people. Yeah. Um, you know, it is for me anyways. And someone reaches out for help. I'm like, All right, I'd love to help you. Like, what can I do to help you? Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of times that's how people create value too, is their mm-hmm. willingness to help people. So not only accepting help, but also giving it whenever you can, you know, and you might not feel like you're a lot of help to some people. Like when you came to me, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to help him. But I sat down with you and I tried to help you, you know, just yeah. whatever way I could. You know, I don't know any secrets. You know, I'm not, I'm not Mr. You know, millionaire, not yet anyways. No, um, yeah, yeah, we're but, working on it. But yeah, we're working on it. We're getting there. And I never look down on anybody who's working actively on their goals yeah. and their dreams. And, and I know that's what you guys are doing, trying to build this company, which is, which is exciting, man. It's awesome. And that's, that gets me fired up. I love to see that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys our age who are like, you know, they're still partying and they're still just chasing girls or whatever. And, you know, they're, they're wasting this time. And, you know, there's a lot of different ideas on what we should be doing with our life. But as long as you feel fulfilled and you're, you're putting something of value out there, I think that's the right way to live life. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, we, I say they're wasting it, but if they're having fun, you know, I don't know if they are or not. You know, I yeah. just know that this is what's right for me. And, you know, as long as you feel that way about what you're doing. I support that, man. I'm here to help any way I can, whenever I can. Well, I appreciate that. And you definitely, I mean, you know, just from being around you and and from the conversations that we've had, like, you've given me a lot to think about, a lot of insight and uh, a lot of confirmation that has been really helpful. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing that you mentioned that I, I love and is one of my tenets of business, which is that a good business and a good business owner, their goal is to help, genuinely help as many people as they can. And, um, I think that when that is the defining factor around what your decisions are as far as how you grow, Mm -hmm. uh, then the success is inevitable. Um, And so that kind of feeds into one of the things that I wanted to speak with you about, which is, uh, so a lot of people find themselves in a place where, you know, they get their business, they get their product solid, Mm -hmm. you know, they understand their market, um, they understand what they uniquely offer, and they're able to do that, they're fulfilling that service or that need in that way. And then they start asking that question, okay, how can I do this more? Mm -hmm. And that can be for two reasons, because you want to make more money or because you want to help more people Mm -hmm. or both. There's Mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Um, So most people will describe that process of doing the more Mm -hmm. as scaling. Um, And I have seen, we have been blessed to see you kind of scale from, you know, at some point you were a solo agent. Um, and now you own a brokerage Mm -hmm. and that is coming with its own unique challenges and its own trajectory for growth. Um, so in your minds, like what does quote unquote scaling mean to you and how does that look like for the outlook of your business? Um, yeah, so, so right now we're still pretty new company, right? We opened up in, in November technically, but we really didn't open our doors until like January. Okay. We're about eight months in. Um, you know, I've already like tripled my, my business that I do, you know, that I've been doing the last, cause I've been in real estate for six years now, seven mm-hmm. years. Um, and you know, we've already made more this year, you know, by, by three times than, than I've ever made before in a given year. Um, which is great, but you know, it's, it's, it's taken a lot of sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And when you talk about scaling, um, you know, that really means, you know, if I go on vacation or if I die, right, is the business still going to make money? Mm. Um, right now the answer is no, you know, the, it might make a little bit, might make enough to keep the lights on. Yeah. Um, but it's not going to keep growing. Um, so right now we're still, we're still trying to figure out scaling. We're still hiring. Uh, you know, I'm learning a lot of lessons. So, you know, one of the things I've always been told is the, the 80, 20 rule, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So like we all know that, but you know, it's not something I've ever really thought about too much. Just for the people that might not have heard of that rule. Can you describe what that rule is? Uh, the 80, 20 rule is, it basically says that. 20% of the people are going to uh, make up 80% of the results, mm. right? 
Um, so, for example, you know, 80% of our deals in the brokerage are done by 20% of our agents, mm. uh, which is, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. You know, you hire a bunch of people. Um, every real estate agent is really their own individual business owner. You know, in a sense, they, they run their own business. They're their own accountant. They're their own boss. They're their own marketing, you know, unless they start a team, which would be scaling. And you can do that in real estate. So I could scale the brokerage, and any given real estate agent could scale their own team. Um, you know, they could have people as transaction coordinators, marketers, uh, you know, people who show houses, people who sell, you know, only list houses. Um, so, you know, we haven't necessarily started to scale yet, but gotcha. I do, I am working on, so I think the most important thing is working on uh, your predecessors, no matter how small you are, mm. right? Who's going to, who's going to be my number two, right? And, you know, I, I got, I got a couple ideas in mind. Um, you know, I really like the way certain people do certain things. And so I'm looking for those. We're always hiring new agents. So, you know, the, the, the real estate game is really a revolving door, right? There's always agents, agents change brokerages every couple of years, mm. you know, on average. Um, I, I was, I was a little different. You know, I stayed with, I started with Weikert, uh, Realtors Hallmark Properties in St. Cloud. Um, and I stayed there my entire career until I opened up my own brokerage, um, which was always my dream. That's why I did it. Uh, I could have made just as much money being just a real estate agent. Um, but, you know, as a kid, we would have family dinners and my family, we would always talk about what kind of business we're going to open up. Wow. You know, that's just the way we thought. That's the way I thought growing up anyways, is what do I, I want to be a business owner. I want to own my own thing. I want to provide something to the world um, other than just a, a service, you know. Right. Um, so I started my own thing because it was always a lifelong dream. It was a family business idea. You know, I had my dad involved. I got my stepmom involved, I got my sister involved, I got all my friends involved. Um, so it really is a family business. But so the scaling question becomes, you need certain people to do certain tasks, mm -hmm. right? Effectively without your presence, right? right? If, if I'm doing all the sales and I go on vacation, the sales are gonna drop by, you know, 80% or 50%, yeah. you know, 50% we'll say. Um, so finding people who can manage the office, finding people who can uh, manage the transactions that we have because we're always, you know, we always have like 10 deals, you know, in process every month. So someone who can manage that, um, someone who can manage our marketing, someone who could uh, manage the agents and do training and stuff like that. So the scaling, we're going to get there, just take some time. Uh, you know, I want to, I have big dreams. I want to open up a second office. We're, we're talking about uh, Lake Nona or Ooh. maybe, maybe Melbourne. Um, I got some, some, friends and family out there that I want to get involved in the process. So, um, you know, we need to hire supporting staff, I mm. think is the important thing. Uh, but they always say you should hire slow, fire fast, uh, yes. right? Hire slow, fire fast. You don't want to just be hiring people just, just willy nilly, you know, right. you want to be out there hiring the right people because really yeah. they're going to be the face of your business. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're not around. So that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at with our scaling. You know, we haven't, necessarily started to scale yet gotcha. i've just kind of been bootstrapping everything you know i'm the i'm the janitor i'm the transaction coordinator i'm the real estate agent i'm the real estate broker i'm the trainer uh you know i have i have my dad's help with some stuff of you course. know but he's he's a full-time police officer and i actually want to talk about him we'll, we'll get there eventually but um yeah so so right now everything's on my back we got to scale at some point um so i hope that you know maybe down the road we have another podcast and we're oh, having yeah. a totally different conversation and i can actually tell you what it takes to scale. And Absolutely. Hey, yeah. I intend to, man. You know, uh, you're going to be a repeat visitor for sure. That'd be cool. If it's something that you're open to. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, and you've mentioned this a few times up until this point, you know, how important your team is. Um, and Most important. As, especially when it comes to growing your business, because mm -hmm. at some point you reach that level where you're like, okay, if this is going to keep doing its thing, I can't be the one that is doing it, mm -hmm. all of it. Um, and so I think that's been a part of like, our scaling process too, or actually the way that we orient ourselves for scaling is that we are starting to, when you first start out, it, it tends to be that you're wearing a lot of hats, Yeah. but you yeah. don't see the hats. You kind of just see the work and right. you're doing the work. And as time continues and you start thinking about growing more, you start kind of divvying up what those roles look like and what needs to get done to fulfill each of those roles if you're not gonna be the one fulfilling it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, in my eyes, that lends itself a lot more to qualification, like how qualified is someone to do this? Um, but I think for us, there's one thing that we have realized about bringing people on, which is that, so 
as a video agency, our qualification process is like, do you know what you're doing? Like, do you know how to work the camera? Do you know how to edit? Do you know what you're looking for? Um, and that just comes from experience. But what we have found is that all of those boxes are boxes that we can help people check. Um, but there are some boxes that we can't help people check. And those are things that they have to be bringing to the table as part of their personality and their values. And so for you, I, I'm curious to know what, what does that look like for you? Like, what are the things that you look for in a team member outside of that qualification box? Um, because those boxes can be checked by a wider range of people, but not all of those people are going to be the perfect fit for you. So what yeah. factors into that perfect fit? Um, the first thing I ever look for in, in anybody that, that I bring on my team is loyalty, mm. right? Because you could spend all the time in the world training somebody. They could be the most intelligent person and they could help your business a lot, you know, right now in the short term. But if they're not going to want to stick around and build something with you, then there's almost no, there's no reason why you should work with that person. Mm. Um, you know, I, I say that because in a business where loyalty is rare, in real estate, loyalty is rare. And it comes from buyers and sellers too. You yeah. know, when, when I work with a buyer or a seller uh, at any given time, you know, the way, I, the way I do business is I don't lock people in to my business if they don't want to work with me. Mm. We can legally do that. We can lock people into to listing contracts and say, hey, we're going to hold you until until this contract's done. Wow. Even if you don't like our services. And if we get you a full price offer, you have to pay, we'll take you to court. You have to pay us a commission. Wow. Um, people don't know that, but, and, and for buyers too. So a lot of times we can, uh, we can get a buyer to sign what's called an exclusive buyer's agreement where they have to work with us. If they buy a house and we don't get paid the commission, they owe us the commission. So I've never been that type. So like when I work with people, whether it's my real estate agents, whether it's my clients, I look for loyalty first. I want to see, you know, I want to see those signs, those mm -hmm. signs of loyalty. Um, and and the, the, the big thing for me uh, after loyalty is intelligence. So how, and, and people have different types of intelligence. I don't expect everybody, I think, I think the way society has molded us to look at our strengths and weaknesses is we should focus on our weaknesses and try to get better at our weaknesses, <laughs> right? I don't think so. Yeah. I think we should look at our strengths and play to our strengths. What is, you know, everybody's different. You know, some people are better at just certain activities. Mm -hmm. And I think getting those people, and they also, the things you're better at are the things you like to do more. Yeah. You know, you're going to you're gonna do better at it by doing things you're better at. I know it's hard to explain, but. Because you love it, you're enticed to do better at it. You want to be the best at something you love to do. Yeah. Everybody's kind of like that. Um, and, you know, finding, finding loyalty, finding intelligence, and playing to those people's strengths um, are the biggest thing. I don't even remember what question you asked me. Just no, it was exactly in alignment <laughs> with it because I think uh, being able to put people and recognize in people what their strengths are yes. is important because, you know, at some point in your business, you become, it's like you're playing chess and the pieces are your team um, or at the very least, they're a part of it. So I think that that is a big piece of that puzzle um, that a lot of people can very easily overlook. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that you might have a few things that you wanted to touch on. So I want to open up the floor for you to be able to do so. Yeah, you, you had mentioned earlier, um, you know, in your own business, going back to, to square one, you know, when you do something, you look at it, you analyze it, and you go back and you start something over. Yeah. And, and that's, that's something I tell all my real estate agents. So any real estate agents out there, listen to this. Uh, when you first start real estate, or even if you've even if you've been in real estate for a long time, you should have a business plan. There's no reason why you shouldn't have your own specific business plan. Whether you're a solo or a team manager, whatever, um, you should have everything sort of outlined, what your goals are, how you're gonna get to those goals. And I like to tell my agents it's a scientific uh, experiment, right? Everybody remembers in science class, and this is how I run business, and this is how everybody should run business, as a scientific experiment. First, you draw up the hypothesis, right? And then you go out there, you say based on based on these based on this activity we're going to get this number right and you should do that for everything you know whether it's door knocks and, and leads cold calls and leads social media posts and leads uh, you know how many leads do you need to get to close a deal and then go back you know after the, after you've done the the activities and you look at the results and you say we did get that let's keep that circle that one we did this we got a totally different number we need we know we need to go back to the to the drawing board and and uh, tweak that, mm. right? And so it's really a scientific experiment the entire time. You do something, it doesn't work, you go back. You do something, it works, you keep it, 
and you keep trying new things and you keep trying new things to get those goals. You know, I have agents who want to make $200,000 a year, right? Well, I'm like, okay, well, how many leads do you need to get in order to close, you know, X amount of deals to get $200,000 a year? Right. And people don't really think like that. They're like, I'm just going to go out and I'm going to get business. Do my thing and it's going to happen. You have to be intentional. Um, I just, so I just want to touch on that. You know, As a real estate agent, you have to be super intentional. I'm going to do X amount of open houses. I'm going to do X amount of cold calls. I'm going to mm-hmm. do X amount of social media posts. I'm going to spend this much money on marketing. You know, And then go back and, and analyze those numbers and uh, you know, really try to narrow it down what works and throw out the stuff that doesn't work and keep trying new things. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing I want to talk about was, uh, you know, my business partner. So my dad is my business partner, right? Just like, you know, you and Ty are business partners. Mm-hmm. Um, two different minds, right? My dad, he's been a police officer for 30 years uh, in St. Cloud, for almost 30 years. And, you know, we both lived here our whole lives, but my dad thinks very, uh, I forget what the personality type is called, but he's very uh, literal and safe. Mm. And, you know, I'm the opposite, right? I'm like... I'm creative. I want to take risk and, and try these new things. I'm looking at Ty because um, I feel like this sounds familiar. <laughs> right. You guys, uh, you know, I'm you in the business partnership and he's, yeah. or, or the opposite. You know, I'm not sure exactly. But, no, it's, you got it. You got it. <laughs> right. So, so like, you know, I want to take these risks. It's good to have that. Yeah. So like even in real estate, and I'm bringing it back to real estate, uh, in real estate, it's good to have a partner, mm-hmm. you know, or in any business, it's good to have a partner because two minds are better than one and you're both going to hold each other accountable and you're both usually going to think slightly different on certain situations. So it's good to have that sort of, you know, where you bounce the ball back and forth and go, this is what we should do. This is what we shouldn't do. Yeah. And then make a decision on somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Because usually that's the best decision. Mm. Um, so I wanted to hit that real quick. Um, I love that because that's a dynamic that Ty and I have observed between each other. And I think in the beginnings, it was a little frustrating just because we didn't have an appreciation for that. But as we've grown and as we've continued through this, we've put things in place and come up with expectations for each other that, okay, now I understand the way you think, I understand the way I think, and we know our biases, so to speak, as far as the way that we want to do things. Mm -hmm. And it gives us a platform by which that can be a discussion between kind of two opposing sides so that we can land in that middle ground. Because you're right, like that's a very hard thing to do on your own. Um, Because I think if it's just you, it's really easy to fall onto either end of an extreme. And it's hard for you to bring yourself back to that middle without an opposing force. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think right. that there's a lot of value in that. And I love that you mentioned that because a lot of the people that I've heard talk about partnerships in business have not spoken necessarily positively about it. And a lot of those individuals have been of my personality type where they're just mm-hmm. like, they want to spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it. And um, I think that for us, like it's worked out perfect because in the beginning, we burned through a lot of ideas that were at a lower level than where we're thinking now. And we didn't give them enough of a chance to work. But I think that was a good thing um, because now we're able to settle in a place that's really high level, but that we also are on the same page on and that we've been able to put a plan in place for. Uh, yeah. And so I'm really grateful for that. And I think one thing that you mentioned about, um, you know, diversifying your, you wanna be able to gauge what's working and what's not. And that means doing some things and analyzing them and seeing how it goes and doing other things and seeing what didn't work. Right. Um, and that kind of touches on one of the points that I wanted to bring up to you. So I know I saw on your story the other day, my man was driving something that is not regular. <laughs> can, you, can you give a little bit of insight into what it is that you were driving yeah, just to set yeah, the stage yeah. for so, this? So I, uh, recently started diving into um, car rentals. Mm-hmm. So, you know, who doesn't love car rentals, right? Mm-hmm. Like like everybody wants to own a cool car, um, you know, and this is one way to do it, right? You know, so I have I have two cars. I have a Tesla that I just bought and I have a, a, a slingshot, which is one of those three, three wheel, mm-hmm. you know, it's almost like a motorcycle, but it's got two wheels up front. Yeah. Um, I don't so, think you had the Tesla when I last spoke to you. I think that's, how, how recent is that? Uh, I got it a month ago. Okay. Got about a month ago. Um, yeah, dude, Teslas are freaking awesome, man. Oh yes. Did you see? Uh, did you see? Uh, Elon Musk is making a robot. Oh yeah, I, he's I making the that. Tesla bot. That should be scary. Yeah, that's gonna be. Um, um, so so the, <laughs> the that's a total experiment too. Yeah. So it's uh you know like I said I made a little bit of money this year. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I want to buy some cool stuff. Right. right? Uh, part of part of getting people to to join the brokerage and and to do what I do is. You know, I, I gotta have fun, right? 
Um, so, you know, that's part of it. I'm having some fun with these vehicles. I've been renting them out. Uh, they're not making me a killing. You know, they make a little bit of money in their assets. Right. So, uh, you know, they are making me residual income. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to mm. people um, because it's not as easy as it looks. Right. And it never is. It takes a little bit of time too. You know, it takes up a lot of my time. You yeah. Because you got to clean these vehicles. You got to run them places. You got to run them back. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really cool. I show up, you know, and that's part of another thing I want to talk about was people want to work with people who are successful. Yes. So sometimes, you know, like I wear this suit almost every day, right? Because if I show up and I'm wearing, you know, a Nirvana shirt or something you know, <laughs> from Walmart, uh, people aren't going to think I'm successful. And it's not necessarily, I'm not saying it's a bad thing if you dress simple or if you right. look simple and you, you want to play mod, you know, modest. Um, but at the end of the day, people want to work with people who are successful. I want to know you're good at what you do. Right. And sometimes a first impression kind of kind of can either make or break you. Yeah. And so I'm always ready for that first impression. And that means nice cars, nice suits, um, you know, just having nice, you know, a couple of nice things, the essentials. Right. Right. And, and taking pride in that. You know, I have a haircut every week. Good every man. two weeks, right? You know, I try to look presentable, um, even though I got the beard going a little bit. <laughs> uh, before we wrap up, I don't know how much time we have. Um, We're definitely cutting it close, but go ahead. Okay. Absolutely. Want to open it up. Yeah, yeah. Bef before we wrapped up, I wanted to uh, to talk a little bit about uh, Mike Ross, which was the guy I mentioned. He bought me my real estate course. Okay. Uh, so it's a little sentimental, but um, he had inspired me to get into real estate. Mm -hmm. He had bought my course, um, and you know I owe it all to him. And he died this year. He passed away uh, a couple months ago. It was really sad. Um, and you know this, this year has been dedicated to him. Uh, and you know, I, I, his family is amazing, and he's an amazing guy, and uh, yeah, really, I really just wanted to just come on here and say that. Yeah. Uh, that you know, a lot of this is because of him. So, uh, yeah. Good man. Well, I'm really sorry to hear that, but I know for a fact that you know he's proud of you. He's proud of what it is that you're doing, and um, man, I, I'm I'm proud of you and what it is that you're doing and what you continue to do and what you continue to reach for, uh, because it's a hard thing to aim for. And, um, you know, I, I love the fact that you value and that you appreciate and that you see yourself as a representation and an extension of the people that inspired you. Because mm. um, I think that the people that are, are giants in this world and get to stay giants, you know, that's what they see themselves as is I, I am the product of the people that have influenced me and that have supported me and that have inspired me. And, uh, you know, I think that's that's such an important part of our stories mm -hmm. that, that cannot be neglected. Absolutely. Um, well, we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. I think we, we ran a little bit long, but, you know, I, I thank you so much for coming on yeah. and yeah, for being for me. open and transparent as you are and uh, and for sharing your story, because, you know, I, I can see now and I hope to increasingly see as you come back and join mm -hmm. us um, just how your unique story has contributed to and continues to contribute to your success. Thank you. Um, well, thank you again, Ian Reinhardt. It's been a pleasure. We're definitely going to have you back on. And uh, for everyone that's listening or watching, be sure to join us for the next episode because I know we're going to have some other amazing stories to tell. And with that, it's a wrap.